This is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Here we are, ladies and gentlemen, once again, doing it again, and again, and again. You know, they say insanity is uh, doing the same thing over and over again, hoping for a different outcome. Uh, That is the definition of of insanity, and so I am insane, okay? I am nuts. I'm crazy. Uh, But uh, call me crazy. I enjoy doing this, so what the hell? Why not do it? And hey, you know, we have a guest. Ladies and gentlemen, I don't know. Do you rec- look into the camera a second and, and t- uh, ask people, do you recognize this man? Now, if you live in San Francisco, you, you probably recognize this man. And if you don't live in San Francisco, you think anybody would know who you are? Uh, <laughs> uh, maybe two people. Maybe two people. And you're one of them. And I'm one of them. Mm-hmm. Right. This, ladies and gentlemen, is Mark Pitta. Uh and I, still nothing. Uh, <laughs> still nothing. How long? How long? Have I, how long have I known you now? Well, I started in '81, and I don't. But I don't think I was doing your radio show until I started getting some gigs, obviously, and getting a little better. So I would say '82. Uh, I st- well, I started in February of '81. '82. So. so that's how many years is that? It's 34, 35? 34 years. Wow, like that, yeah. have we known each other that long? Yeah. But. Uh, it's not like we we get to talk anymore. It's like when you're when you when you moved, then you know that yeah. was it. And then yeah. I moved. Everybody moved to LA after a while. The only time I saw you in the intervening years was you came by uh, Sirius XM. That was yeah, that was fun. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, I think that was the first time we had seen each other in years and years and years. And not only that, I remember because <laughs> I got into your studio and I you still hadn't looked at me yet, and your your back was to me, and then and then you're on the air, and then you just went. Hello, <laughs> but it was on the air. You know what it is? Here's here's what I used to do, and I don't know if you remember me doing this at all when when I did radio in San Francisco. Mm-hmm. But I wouldn't uh, talk to people when we were off the air because I didn't want to use any material right. or or say anything that would start a really good riff. Mm-hmm. Uh, while we were off the air, I wanted yeah. to say before the air. So some people thought that I was like you know, hard to deal with or, you know, whatever. But that was my thing. I, you can get the most famous person in the world, bring them in, and I will tell my producer, do not bring them in till about a half a minute before they're going to okay. go on the air. Because I don't want to ruin the moment. You know, then the minute the microphone goes on, that's what I want. Yeah. And you can't recreate ad libs if you happen to come up with one riffing off the air, and then it's going to seem phony. Oh, we've had that happen where where we said something, and then I came back on the air and I said, "Tell that story you were telling again," and then yeah. they retell the story, and it sucked. <laughs> yeah. I hate those morning zoo guys with the newspaper here. They they talk to you like this. He said, no, "Is it the comedy club coming up?" And they go, uh, "We'll be right back with more Mark Bitta. And they're off the air, and they get they take the newspaper. They just go. <sighs> oh, God, like, yeah. Do you know the trouble with the morning zoo guys? is they are afraid that you're going to be funnier than they are. Which? They try to top you. They try to top the comic. You know who's the worst in that is cruise directors. When you work a cruise ship and they work, they think they're comedians. I'm like, really? You want to go to a comedy club and do that? Because we'll find out. (laughs) (laughs) And they think they're funnier than you. I'm like, no, I'm here for a reason. Yeah, no, they they do that. And they, uh, it's abysmal. I mean, I talk to comics. Mm-hmm. who are used to doing my show, and then they have to go out on the mm-hmm. road and they have to do all these idiotic morning zoo shows. Yeah. And they would complain about that. The, the, the morning zoo guys were always trying to top them. Yeah. And my idea was, hey, I brought you in here. You get me the fucking laugh. Because mm-hmm. I'm going to get the ratings from it, not you. Right. You know, I mean, I'm using you, right? And, and if I've asked you to come in and be funny, why am I trying to top you? I just realized uh, you could swear on this show. Oh yeah, you can fucking, you can, you can fucking swear, swear. Swearing hasn't become has become no fun at all anymore. I you, sent you something. Do you? I I think I kept whenever I was on your show, I kept the tape, you know, and then I would listen to it later. Yeah. Um, but if you find them now, it seems like it just you know our voices are my voice is higher. And I, but some are on YouTube, and there's one of Robin Williams on your show. Yeah, and. Yeah. 
That's hysterical. And then I heard, the, oh, I remember, I do this silly thing where I, you know those uh, mixtapes people used to make? Like, they put yeah. their favorite songs. So I do that with CDs, but I do this weird thing where I, say I like a song, and this particular song was Radio Nowhere yeah. by Springsteen. Right. So I go, I always put a clip before the song. Yeah. Uh, as a little thing. So I go, I'll do a radio. Okay, I'll get, maybe Alex is on YouTube. And I found one where you go, yeah, come back. Louis C.K. is at the punchline, and uh, Dominic Millen, you're at the Cobb's Ball. <laughs> it's just great to hear that again. I, I have a lot of those tapes. You know, I, I've been actually making them into files and playing them here on, on, mm -hmm. on Gabnet, we call the thing. Yeah. And uh, uh, it, some of those tapes, you know why the voices were faster? Because they were recorded at the wrong speed. Oh. Because they were recorded at a slightly faster speed. So if I find one of those, I then go into the file and slow it down a little bit and bring the pitch back to where it should be. That's like the warnings on uh, on uh, television you, or radio. They speed it up like uh, some people with heart condition can have you know, that. <laughs> what they do no is they, they, no, they, talk, they, they speed it up and then they change the pitch so the voice sounds the same. But sounds like the fastest guy in the world ever talking. Does that one guy remember that guy? Yeah, and and you're supposed to get all those warnings. Yeah, yeah. You know. I love these. I love these commercials where they uh, for for medicine, because uh, I'm I have nothing to do during the day anymore. So I watch television, yeah. and on television, what's on during the day? Nothing but these ads for one, fakakta uh, oh. brew after another, and then they they say. You may live longer if you use Brypraxa or whatever. Right. And then for the next 55 seconds, it's all the contradictions. It may cause <laughs> excessive farting, you know, whatever. Well, you ever watch, uh, there's a channel called Antana TV, which we don't have anymore in the Bay Area, but they play Johnny Carson from the 60s, 70s, 80s, full shows. Right. And right. every commercial on those yeah. are... Uh, assisted stairs, uh, a, a, colo a portable colostomy bag. Yeah. It's like, it's a, yeah. who, they think we're old because we're watching Johnny Carson again. You yeah. know? Turn a little bit this way oh, just so they can see a little bit profile oh, of you. And look at me, just... then, then look at me and it'll be fine. But anyway, <laughs> uh, yeah, no, I, I, so uh, they know who their audience is, mm -hmm. you know, and uh, uh, quite frankly, if I had a TV station, I wouldn't run those ads. You know, in fact, you listen to a radio program and you, you, you know, it's a talk show and we're talking about the issues today and blah, 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 blah. We'll be back after these important messages. Are you having trouble learning how to read? You know, we hooked on phonics. And you go, wait a minute. They're not advertising because these people aren't their audience. Yeah. You know, so what kind of stupid people are listening to talk shows? It's like they all look like Better Call Saul, you know, yeah. that he produced it, you know. Yeah. Well, I said I said at one radio station, I said, I wouldn't I wouldn't take this commercial. I wouldn't take that commercial. And they go, what do you want us to do? We earn a living selling commercials. Mm -hmm. And I said, when you run them, you're hurting yourself because you're telling people the people who listen to you are stupid. Mm hmm. Right, mm -hmm. and uh, you you have to be careful about what you advertise because that sets the tone of who you are as well. You, you know, know, I don't like is on like Facebook. There's a, a story. Uh, I read it was uh, uh, Michael no Russell Westbrook book. What's, oh, Red, West, I West, I know, I know, I'm going to say it again. Russell Westbrook is with us tonight. Yeah, yeah. It said uh, says Kevin Durant is a cheater. Yeah, and then you read it about oh my god, he's taking these supplements, and then you re oh, it's an they're selling you these supplements. It has nothing to do with KD or Westbrook. Yeah, it just gets you in there. So do not even click that. Yeah, don't even click those. Yeah. So so anyway, uh, <coughs> it, but Mark is a comic. Mm -hmm. He has been a comic. He has plied that trade for how many years now? Thirty four. Never had a full time job. Never had a full time job. Mm -mm. Huh, okay, just part time. Uh, uh, Occasionally, uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> What do you say, catering? No, occasionally oh, I've had occasionally. it, I, but never had a full time. And I tried comedy, and then yeah, yeah. Took and off. so it's made you a living. I'm grateful because it's 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 great living, and it, and I think keeps you healthy because you're laughing all the time with your friends, and you know laughter releases endorphins. I did a show once where, you know, uh, you feel so good. I an email from a woman. She said, "Can you talk to our group about the healing powers of humor?" And I like gigs, but I said, I'm not a motivational speaker. I don't know if humor heals. And then I realized eight years ago, there was a woman in a wheelchair at one of my shows. She was paralyzed from the waist down 20 minutes into my act. 
she walked out. So it's good. It feels good to help people. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> I snuck a joke in. Sorry. <laughs> Humor can't heal. Wait a minute. I, I, um, um, you know, I was talking with uh, Bubs about this the other day. Bubbles? But when Bud, Bubs and I ever start talking, we, we, it always comes down to health. That's Larry Bubbles Brown. It comes down Bubbles to health Brown. and it comes down to death and so on. Yeah. And we were talking about all the comics we know who are dead. Mm. But then I was talking about it seems that it either goes one way or the other. Either they die really young, like a Bill Hicks or even a Sam Kinison mm-hmm. or. Uh, 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 there are a number of other people I think we can name who who died young. Oh, yeah. But then there's Erwin Corey, 103. I my friend we mentioned before, Mort Saul just turned 90. I was just at an event. Jerry Lewis was supposed to be at 92. Bill Dana just died, and you know, Bill Dana was, was still alive. Yeah, I, my name Jose. You yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. When they go when they go early, Kevin Meany. Kevin Kevin Meany went. He was in his 50s, wasn't he? Yeah. Yeah. So th- that's kind of young. But, I mean, when I had Bill Hicks die at uh, 32, I was devastated. Yeah. You know? Because Bill Hicks was, well, to begin with, he's one of the best comics I ever heard in my life. But he was also just a great guy. Everybody loved Bill. And to think that he was dead mm-hmm. really, really did something to me. But the fact that some of them die young and tragically, mm-hmm. tragically, mm-hmm. Uh, 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 Freddie Prinze, yep, good example, tragically, and then Phil Hartman, but that he was Phil Hartman, yeah. that was tragic, yeah, and he was, you could say he was young, he was, I think, in his early forties or something like that. And I just heard Dana Carvey told me that he had to prove something. There's a script written about uh, Phil Hartman and what yeah. happened, and Dana's like, he was, they have me saying. To Jan Hooks, uh, she does that on the air. We're fucked. He goes, I never said that. <laughs> you know, like they're just writing a story about Phil Hartman and how he died. And wow, I don't know if I want to watch that. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, that was a terrible situation. His wife killed him. Yep, and, and then he, and herself, and then it, it, and the drug dealer was involved. Yeah, uh, it was just, just she was on just, drugs. Just anyway. tragic. So just say no. But mm-hmm. then, as I say, you know, uh, you, you look at Mel Brooks. How old's he? I know. I might yeah. see Mel Brooks at the end of the month. He's doing the win in Vegas to do a Q and A. Although yeah. I know every story he's ever told. Carl Reiner. Yep. Still alive. Yeah. Dick Van Dyke. Um, uh, Dick Van Dyke. Norman Lear, who wasn't Norman really Lear. a comic, but right. you gotta call him a comic because he was yeah. a comic genius. Yeah. Uh, Norman Lear uh, is is really getting up there. Mm-hmm. But when I heard that. Uh, that that uh, uh, what's his name Professor Erwin Corey was 103 and he looked 100 when he was performing <laughs> he, well, <yeah. laughs> he looked yeah the, the uh, crazy this, hair the great man. story I tell about is when I was first when I was here in New York doing my little sex show Midnight Blue oh yeah right uh, I used to like hang the fr- around the fringes of that sex scene nah, and I didn't hang around the fringes I hung around the sex scene and one night I walk into this apartment where there's an orgy and I walk into this one room where there are about 30 people in the room all having sex and there on the floor fucking was Erwin Corey. <laughs> I didn't know. And, and I, is... I don't know why, but that should have been the end of my sexual career. You know, it should, it should, the thought should have just burned itself into my head and never been able to get an erection again. Yeah, in the Playboy yeah. match, you have James Caan and Barbie Benton and, you're, and Midnight Blue's got Erwin Corey. Uh, er, Erwin Corey, <laughs> Erwin Corey. What channel was that on, Midnight Blue? Channel J. Channel J. I was visiting New York once in 89, and uh, I love the commercials on Channel J because they say, call us 976-FUCK, we'll fuck. You can fuck my wet pussy. But if you look really closely at the bomb, it says first, first 30 seconds free. So I'm thinking, and if you time it right. If you time it just right. <laughs> Hello. Thank you. you know? now, I'll tell you what I did when I first came back to New York and I didn't have a job here and I was looking for a job. I worked for my friend Steve Gruberg and he had all those shows after midnight mm-hmm. on those channels and I produced those commercials. Oh, you did? I literally produced those commercials. With the girls? With, with, with the girls and everything, yeah. Not not all the ones people wow. saw because there were other people who owned time there, but I I did uh, gee one right after another after another. Do you have the another. DVDs? Because you know they sell those, the DVDs of Midnight Blue. Oh, the, uh, Midnight Blue. Well, yeah. that's a different story. But you are I, you are in one of the commercials, but it's what's his name? Uh, Who's the guy? I can't remember now. Oh, the guy who's what. 
the guy that did the Midnight Blue oh, show. Oh, you mean Al Goldstein? Al Goldstein. Well, yeah. the Midnight Blue tapes that are out, mm -hmm. you know, I went, well, at least, you know, I, what bothered me was I produced most of that stuff. You know, I so produced what, most of those segments that they ran on there. Oh. And some guy went out when Al Goldstein was suddenly had all kinds of financial problems. Uh, I, uh, I, uh, we, we, we tried to buy the Midnight Blue tapes from him mm -hmm. and he wouldn't sell them to us. And we were willing to pay something like $5,000 or something. No, this guy paid less. He wouldn't sell them to us, but he would sell them to a total stranger. So this guy <laughs> owned all these things. And then I said to him, do you have the releases? He said, what release? I said, the releases, like the releases on me, because I suddenly, see, I never appeared much on Midnight Blue. Yeah. It was just, it wasn't that I was ashamed of it, it's just I wanted to be in the background. Right. But occasionally I would do a segment if, it, if you had to interview or do something like that. So I, uh, uh, I suddenly looked at these tapes, and I'm on every one of them. <laughs> every single one of them. And I said, do you have a release on me? And he goes, mm, well, I think so. I said, no, you don't. I said, I never signed a release for Midnight Blue. Never. I made sure I never did. And uh, he, he then said, well, uh, what do you want? And I said, to use those tapes anytime I want to for anything I want to use them for. Yeah. And he said, okay, I'll send you a letter. I never got a letter from him. I, I, but that whole thing was just, you know. It's like interview, interviewing Marilyn Chambers. We, we, and we, that, that, all those episodes I directed and edited. Wow. You I know? have I have a couple. I always say I have I have those tapes, but they're in, as I call it, Affidavit A, because I got divorced and she has all my stuff. Oh, really? But it's in a storage unit, and my ex-landlord is nice enough to get it for me, and now it's in yeah. his storage. Now he's going to open the boxes and tell me if she included everything. I, I'm not going to. I'm not going to go into this, but uh, <laughs> he he recently came off a uh, divorce, uh, mm -hmm. which is. Uh, have you been able to? Do you use it in your act yet? I process it that way. Uh huh. I, I think you almost have to process yeah. it, don't you? I mean. It, it helps. It helped me for the um, the amount of time that I, you know, really, it's on your mind constantly. And then if it's on my mind and I have a comic mind, a joke is going to be formed. Yeah. So, but the first well, joke I ever got, I did was, I, I uh, not to go into detail, but I, I did get off a plane in Atlanta airport and I got served papers at baggage claim. Did you that, really? That's cold. Is that true? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So wow. my first joke was, it's scary to get divorce papers at baggage claim because everything, or at the airport, because everything's more expensive at the airport. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so that was the first joke I wrote. <laughs> then I wrote one, you know, vindictive one. I said, if you're looking for your soulmate, make sure they have one. Uh, so bitter jokes would come yeah, out. And yeah. then, yeah. But did you find that being able to then play this out in comedy, mm -hmm. in your act, was a Good catharsis for you? It was healthy for me, yeah. It, made, it, it got me over the, the hump. It, it, over the hump. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's been six months, and I'm very happy. So. It, it, well, I mean, it, I would hope you would find some measure of happiness eventually. Yeah, it's, 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 it's hard when you get betrayed, and it's hard when, you, when somebody says, I love you, I love you, I don't love you. You know, it's like, oh. Well, they, she never said those words. Well, but. you know, I, at least I know it from, from past experience that the dissolution of a relationship is kind of gradual. Mm -hmm. It's not no, like overnight. Yeah. No. So if it happens overnight to you, yeah. it's got to be really shitty. It was gradual. It was, it was uh, a couple uh, years. Uh, really, of, you uh, felt it? I felt like this isn't going well. This isn't going very well. But we never, we never really examined or put our marriage under a microscope and, or anything. We didn't communicate very well. Yeah. So. Well, I said, I said to Marjorie, I said, you know, I said, uh, 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 what I love about marriage is when you first meet each other, it's that first time you tell each other, I love you. And, and the other person is kind of like, what? I just heard him say that? Yeah. And then they think for a second, whichever person it was, and they go, I love you too. And that's the first time you say it, and it's so thrilling. Well, by the time you're about 10 years into marriage, <laughs> it's on the phone. Love you. Love you too. Bye. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like, it, it's, it's like a cursory kind of I love you. It's never the same I love you as the first time you said I love you. My favorite Mary Tyler Moore episode, I think it was season five, Ted Bessel was playing her boyfriend and she goes over his apartment and says, I'll go see you later. Bye. And she goes to the door, turns back, she goes, 
um, Bill, or his name was Bill, I love you. And he goes, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> it was like the moment she thought she was going to get it back. It was hysterical. Yeah. yeah. But, uh, you know, and, and the other reason that marriages usually last longer than they really should is because you think maybe somehow it's going to go back to the way it was. And some marriages are like that, and they do go back. And they do find it again? Yeah. Not, it's never going to be anything. When something is new, that's the best. Like when I moved to LA, it was so exciting. But I go there now, it's a pain in the ass. Uh, but anything that's new is exciting, and it, that can't last the whole time. Yeah, yeah. But you, but you were going with her for a while before you ever got married, right? Oh yeah, I didn't. Uh, we didn't even date for six months after we met, and we just hung out. We didn't actually did, didn't date. We so it wasn't out. one of those impulsive marriages Not where at all, you, know, no. you met her one day and you just went head over heels and no, yeah, it's yeah, very well. Should I get into this? Well, I didn't trust women when I met her because my last girlfriend was, drum roll, Janice Dickinson. No. Thank you. No. Good night. No. No. Not the one that looks like now. She no. looked better when I knew her. No. No. Is, that, is, that the, is that what you say? Uh, I was with her six. She was very entertaining for three months. I was with her for six. <laughs> Janice Dickinson. Yeah, I can go. I can tell Shame almost. on you. It was one of those things. I was hosting a TV show in San Francisco. It was Mornings on 2. It was a news yeah, show. Right, you did host it. Was it was a live news yeah, show, and yeah. she was plugging her book. And I thought her book was great. And I said, I want to, let's go. I want to have lunch with you. I want to hear more stories. And then that night, I'm like, and you're here. Let's go to the Fillmore. And then we saw a show. And then, um, and then I talked to her on the phone, and she said, well, I'm seeing some guy in New York. And I go, but you live in L.A. I go, can I go visit you? And I, I kind of won her over, and she broke up with the other guy. But she was entertaining. It was fun to hear the stories, and she was at Studio Fifty Four. And I'm sure in those days she didn't look the. She didn't look as she had work, but not as much. Now well, it's now she's got a beard because the pubic hairs have moved up to her face. <laughs> but uh, uh, you know, yeah, that's one thing I, I've told people this. I have never had sex with anybody famous. We just had this discussion with some comedians. I just said, "Who who famous have you had sex with?" Like no one. And I said, I had the uh, penthouse pet of the year in 1990. We were actually a couple for yeah. a while, Julie Strain. So I, but I forgot to mention Janice. I didn't. I forgot, totally forgot. Yeah, no, I never. Uh, I I uh, dated, you know, a f famous people. Like I, I, I did, that's just as good. I went out on a date with Linda Blair. I just met Linda Blair. Really? Yeah, like uh, uh, Monster Palooza. I, I love Linda. Yeah. She's a terrific She's sweet, person. She's sweet, a little She's, girl. Yo, fun, fun person. Yeah. To this day, I mean, uh, she always asks after me. Uh, but, uh, uh, you know, and, and, and the one woman who did want to go out with me and we just never managed to get together was Marilyn Chambers. Oh. And was, uh, we kept saying, oh, we got to get together. I'll come down the, to Vegas. Or you'll come up here. And we never got to that position. And then she died. In so, a trailer park. In a trailer oh, park. Oh man, yeah. she was gorgeous. I was. She was uh, a nice lady. I liked her. She, and and I I just you know, I just watched her in Rabid, which was her legitimate yes. uh, yeah. David Cronenberg film. And that is a that stand that still holds up. That's a good movie. Oh, that was a good film. Rabid. Yeah. Uh, but Marilyn Chambers, I was I saw her on stage at the Mitchell Brothers Club. I don't think I was old enough to get in. I went with my my high school buddies, and that's when they used to do live uh, sex shows. And yeah, yeah. Yeah. That's where I saw her. So, yeah, but I, I, I somehow I just, I guess famous women never appealed to me or I just figured maybe there was something in me that said I'm not good enough to come on to them or yeah. whatever. Oh, who was it? I, I shouldn't tell. I can't tell you the guy's name because uh, I don't have permission, but it was uh, this guy named Rich and uh, he uh, he had, had sex with Heather Locklear. Oh, really? Yeah, that was yeah. he won. Now he won that day. He, he won. <laughs> you win the prize. No, he only won if she was good. Oh, this is <laughs> he stayed over, and she goes, "What do you want for breakfast?" And he was all nervous, like, "No, nah, I have to go." I'm like he was like, "She's gonna make me breakfast." Like you didn't have Heather Locklear make you breakfast? Yeah, <laughs> crazy. Yeah, you have to say, and she made me breakfast. Yeah, you know, so that it wasn't like she then fucked me and kicked me to the curb. Yeah, you know. Who was the other guy? I just read that story about uh, Jimmy Fallon. Uh, Nicole Kidman came over for something, and she he didn't have sex with her, and she looked like she wanted it. She yeah. went to his apartment. And oh, I've had a couple of people where people have said to me, uh, you know, uh, she was coming on you, you know that, don't yeah. you? And I, I'm the kind of guy that you'd have to send up a flare first before I'd know you were coming on to me. One girl came on to me uh, off air, and my producer goes, you see what's happening? It was, and it's hard to Carla 
Gugina? G- Gugina. Gugina. Yeah, well, she's beautiful. Yeah. And I'm, I didn't know. I just thought people are nice to you because you, they want you to like their movie. I had somebody, a famous singer's daughter, come on to me. Uh, yeah. And I didn't know she was coming on to me. Okay. But I'll, I'll tell you. Who this, I love this topic, though, because yeah. this is my favorite one. This is the one that everybody's <laughs> going to be scratching their head saying, I wonder who that was. I wonder who that was. <laughs> who is that? I love the Halloween. Well, listen, it's great. DJ Hooker. Come on. <laughs> it's great to see you. Do you have Skype, by the way? Um, I watched the movie Snowden, so I cover up. Oh, that's my yeah, camera. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no. Oliver Stone said to do that. Uh, do, do you, I have Skyped, but I don't usually. Oh, because if we Skyped, I, I could put you, we could do some more stuff, and uh, I could record your picture. And, I'll take uh, the tape off. The whole thing. Yeah. yeah. You you have tape. On, you really believe that? Uh huh. Yeah. Do you really think you have that much to hide? Who's the guy? I forget the comedian. Oh, it's coming. Rich. He's a great comic. Uh. uh just cut this pause out. Uh, 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 Robert Duchesne. No, Robert Duchesne. Yeah. Oh, he's going to kill me. I can't remember his name. Uh, anyway. But he goes, just found out, you know, the FBI can could, could, could watch you. Mm-hmm. Uh, so the FBI knows they could watch you if you're wa- if you're jerking off to porn. To me, that just makes it more exciting. <laughs> that somebody's watching me. <laughs> Mark Pitta, thank you so you're much welcome. for spending some time with us. And uh, I'll, I'll, uh, we'll carry on with the Skype. It, let's do it, really. Yeah. And I, it, 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 let's carry on with the friendship as well. Yeah, well, That yeah, would be good, you. too. Ladies and gentlemen. The man that is Mark Pitta. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. This is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network. Talk like you've never heard it before. And here we are, ladies and gentlemen. I, as you may notice, I am dressed differently. That's because that was recorded the other day with Mark. Uh, but I love it when we have these interviews uh, that we do with people, and you can see them. It's m- far more interesting. Okay. Let me see here. Let me get a few things uh, set up and ready to go here. First of all, I've got to turn on Skype. And Skype is the way that people call this program. Yes. This is one of those stupid call-in programs where people are stupid and call in. And they're stupid because they have to talk to me. And that is a bad idea. But anyway, uh, what we do is we don't have just one person we talk to at a time like on talk shows, right? Uh, but we have like upwards to nine other people, and they can all interact with each other and argue with each other and yell and scream at each other. Well, look, here's somebody coming coming to us on a night that he doesn't normally come to us on. Let's see here. Wait a minute. Hold on a second. There you are. Wow. There's Jason. Hi. How are you, Jason? How's it going? Good. Why? Are we, this is a Thursday. Today is my Friday. What do you mean today is your Friday? I worked uh, Sunday to cover for somebody, so I worked Sunday through Thursday this week. Oh, I see. So so, so the, the wife, who only allows you to do this once every two weeks, right? S- still pay period, so it's either tonight or tomorrow. It's either tonight <laughs> or tomorrow. Could you, could, is she asleep or is she awake? Nah, she's watching, probably watching Shameless. It came out the... Season eight or seven came out on Netflix. Oh, really? Too bad, because if she was asleep, you could lie and say you didn't do it tonight, and then you could do it again tomorrow night, too. Yeah. You know, but anyway. So um, uh, how, how, have you, how have you been? Well, I've been pretty good. I don't know if you notice. I'm calling from a different location today. Yeah, there's a matador in back of you. Yeah. There's a, my cat decided to get in my ductwork, so I had to tear apart the wall to get at the the duck to get the cat out so wouldn't, my uh, wait, computer wait. room is all torn up wouldn't the cat have eventually come out on its own no she's true stuff and by the way we're not talking about anything gay here uh but the cat would have stayed there and not come come back she, she couldn't get out the angle that the cat was at she couldn't oh, get out of the duct wow so I had to had to tear the wall apart, so, tear the ceiling apart to so, get at a joint to take the duct apart to get the cat out. So this was the uh, home version of a cat up a tree. Yeah, or the cat in a sewer drain or a you know a well or something like that. Now, how are you going to prevent the cat from doing this again? I, it was my own fault. You know, the I I took the vent cover off in my kid's room because to allow more air to go through. Yeah. So I just know that I can't take the vent cover off of there yeah. anymore. Oh, hey, Charlene is calling. Boy, we're, uh, we're we're loading up early here. Hello, Charlene. How are you there? Charlene? 
Are you there, Charlene? She can't hear me, which means she probably has a problem. So let me call her back. Hold on a second, folks. Wait a minute. Let me get to the uh, to the group here first. Wait, where is everybody? Wait a minute. Hold on a second. Where where is everybody? Wait a minute. I lost I lost everybody. Hold on a second. Okay, forget that. Wait a minute. Phil, are you there, Phil? I lost everybody. Oh, this is ridiculous. This is terrible. How did I lose everybody? Huh. Wait a minute. Hold on a second. Let me do this so you can see me while I'm trying to get all this going. Um, everybody, call me back, okay? Uh, apparently, uh, we have a little bit of a, of a problem here. Um, hmm. Yeah, that's really weird. Yeah, that's really strange. Oh, well. Uh, let me see here. Or did, or maybe did something happen to my Skype completely? I don't know. Let's see here. Wait a minute. Let me see if... What happened? Let me see. I'm calling, I'm calling Phil. Let me see what's happening. And he's not answering. Have we got something wrong with Skype tonight? Oh, boy. Well, you would have thought he would have, he would have answered. Let's call Jason. Let's see if Jason answers. Is Jason... Uh, no, J there's Jason. Hello, Jason. You there? Yeah, how's it going? Okay. Turn on my camera. And then add to group and add to group. Okay, there we go. And now Renee Collins we add to the group, too. So, wait a minute. What is, what, what is this? Come on. Are, are you there, uh, Renee? Are you there, Phil? Oh, boy. This is, this is ridiculous. Add to call group. Uh, uh, Kevin. Kevin, can you hear me? Oh, this is ridiculous. This is. Hey, I should just hang up and call back. Why don't you hang up and let me in. let me let me. St I'm going to stop Skype here, and then I'm going to reboot it up here. All right. And see what the problem is. I I don't know what it is, folks. I'm sorry. Uh, let me see here. Skype, Skype, and I will sign out of Skype. Okay, then I will sign into Skype. Okay, let me see here with the password. Okay, and I sign in, and everything should be up there, and we should be up. Okay. Hello, Phil. There's, yeah. there's Phil. Okay. Do you have a, you oh, have a minute, that's not what I want. I want this. I want this. The, the picture here. There we go. There we go. Was there a problem? I don't know what the problem was. You put uh, us, I think, on hold. Yeah, well, and, but then I couldn't, when I went back to where you guys were, you weren't there. Uh, well, we were for a while, but uh, it started to ring, just a, like a phone. You, yeah, you were yeah, ringing. Yeah, uh, yeah. I answered it, but uh, there was nothing there. You hung, really? uh, it hung up. Okay, well, anybody else now start calling. Uh, uh, I said, uh, here, here comes Jason. Okay. All right. So we add Jason. Are you there, Jason? Jason, can you hear me? Yeah, okay, we got Jason. And uh, then uh, now it's Kevin. Hello, Kevin. You got me okay, Kevin? I can hear you. Okay, good. All right. Well, Can't now, see now, yet. now we're okay. I have no idea what was happening. And Renee Collins, uh, give us back another call, and uh, as, uh, Charlene as well. Okay, and we can add you guys. I think your camera may be off, or at least it is for me. My, no, it's, it's on. No? My camera. No. Yeah, I don't, I don't see you. I just see you. Oh really? Pulsating, pulsating. Oh, I see Alex. Huh? I just I see Alex. I see Phil. I don't see Kevin. Oh you, yeah. Oh, oh, uh, yeah. Kevin, turn your camera on. Well, this is strange because it's doing something weird on my end too. Okay. You might call back. It looks in. like it's. Yeah, I'm gonna try calling back. Hang up and call back. Uh, so you have a picture of me, right, Jason? You can see me. Yes. Yes. Oh, okay. And um, here's Charlene. Charlene, are you there? Yeah, Char up. Charlene, can you hear us? She could be having the same problem. She's having some kind of problem? I don't know. Let's see here. No? She's been using her iPhone. Uh, Force quit. You know, I just uh, uh, updated uh, my Skype last night yeah. to 
the, to the newest one. Maybe this one isn't as good as the last one. Well, it, it could be that, uh, you know, I don't, I don't think so. I think it, it seems to be working okay, but, you know. Yeah. Well, there goes Charlene. We lost Charlene. Let me let me try calling Charlene. Let me see what happens okay. here. Hold on a we second. Can... <laughs> if we call Charlene, maybe she'll be uh, okay. You know. Yeah. Um, and Kevin, uh, you, you're you're you still there, Kevin? Uh, he's re redoing. He's he's, he's, he's calling gone. back. Yeah, he's calling back. Uh, uh, Charlene, can you hear us? Yeah, I can hear you. Can uh, okay. you hear me? Okay, now turn on your camera. Let's see if that works. Um, there we yeah, go. Thanks. There we go. There's Charlene. Okay. I had to. Co I called you back is what I had to do. You've said uh, some, okay. ki some kind of gazorchness. I don't know. I don't I don't understand this technology. It's just it is Gazorchness. Is that a Jewish word or do you just make that up? Uh, I had a friend who used to use that, and it, it was his <laughs> own term for uh, just, you know, yeah. Ungapachka. Good, yeah. Same as Ungapachka. <laughs> yeah, that's that was, English. That was a great interview. Huh? I love nope. when he started talking about Janice Dickinson. Oh, I see. Yes, yes. He's had uh, he's had uh, he's had quite a uh, a career with the, with the ladies over the years. Uh, he's a stand up guy, or he's stand up comedian. Yeah, and he used to be uh, the uh, host of Mornings on Two over at Channel Two, in San Francisco. And uh, he was in New York, and so I uh, had him come over, and we did a little interview, and we went out and had some dinner and had a very nice time catching up on old, uh, on old times. And Mark Pitt, in case people are wondering who I'm talking about. Um, but what's great is whenever I do these uh, interviews where I actually have people, where you can see them and stuff, the, the numbers go up considerably because uh, people kind of enjoy watching that. But anyway, uh, 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 what happened? What happened to Renee? She now she she's not online. Oh. Maybe she had to restart. Maybe she's rebooting. Kevin's offline too, so he's probably rebooting. Yeah, he said he was going to. Uh, I overheard him say something about doing a force quit. A force uh, quit. So yeah. yeah okay. On the Skype. Well, he'll be back. He'll be back. Yeah. Anyway, so um, um, you know, today is uh, quite a, quite a day. Uh, today uh, the. Uh, the Republicans uh, made uh, the world uh, knowledgeable of their, of their completely of their of their plan, their their medical plan, and I think it's just terrific. Yeah, I hadn't heard anything about I, it. I think it's just amazing. It's terrific. They, I didn't think the Republicans could come up with this good a medical plan. Was it this one that Trump called it mean? No, that, that was just that, mean. No, that was the was old that one. That was the mean. This is the very nice medical plan. This is the Senate version of uh, of the medical plan. And, uh, oh, without sarcasm, can you fill us in? Uh, no, not really. Uh, <laughs> 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 not really. Uh, did you notice a, a, a sarcasm there? A little bit. Oh, I, that's amazing because uh, I didn't think I was being sarcastic. Well, it was your a uh, little bit of uh, that Cheshire cat smile. This thing is so bad that even Republicans aren't thinking of voting for it. You know. Yeah. So I mean, uh, hey, he, here's the thing. You know, the reason why. Let me. Uh, hi, Kevin. Kevin's there finally. There we go. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, the the thing is that the Republicans, and I was thinking about this today. You know, the reason why Obamacare had so many problems, because. He didn't really come up with the plan. The Republicans did. This is what he could get away with from the Republicans. So really, Obamacare was a Republican's idea of a medical care plan that they could live with, at least at the time. You know, so I don't know what they're griping about. They passed it to begin with. So shut the fuck up and live with it and just make it better. Clean up the, the bad parts of it. What they're telling us is that it's so bad that it's going to be bankrupt and that uh, there'll be no uh, no one uh, no, but providing. That's what, they're, they said, that's what they're telling you, but these are a bunch of fucking liars, okay? These are a bunch of people trying to sell you a used car. Um, now, what was it that um, uh, Putin said the other day? Um, destroy Carthage. Uh, he was quoting uh, uh, Marcus uh, Cato, I think, from uh, Marcus uh, who? Rome. Marcus was who? it Cato, C-A-T-O? Uh, 
uh, the uh, the Roman uh, Cato was uh, was uh, was was uh, uh, the Green Hornet sidekick. What? what no, no, no. Right. This was uh, this was a Roman. Uh, anyway, during the, during his interview, he he quoted that and he said that uh, he had always ended his speeches with uh, the words uh, "Carthage must be destroyed." And uh, so maybe that's uh, what Trump is doing with uh, Obamacare. Is 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 knocking it down first and then starting well, fresh well, and new. It, well, it, but they're not starting fresh and new. What what they're proposing literally guts health care for the average person in this country. Literally guts it. At least well, with Obamacare, know, there is it, with Obamacare there is something, you know. Yeah, uh, social welfare, but uh, no, it's not social. So it's not how, 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 how is it social study? welfare? Explain to me because how, all it is is a bunch of subsidies what, no, going to insurance companies. Uh, what, what, what it's doing, corporate welfare. Well, it's cal- yeah, corporate yeah, welfare. It's, then. Corporate, it's corporate welfare. Well, you they're, should, they're you should, you should lo- these, you, you these should, crooks. You should love that. No. So then you're, you're in favor of single payer. Then. No, uh, so I'm you, in favor you take, of, a, of wait, a good, wait, clean system. A good, so clean you think system. people should uh, make you know no. somebody else should make money off of your prostate cancer besides the doctors and people actually working on you. Bill well, wants everybody to pay out of pocket. He said that. No, I only want you to pay out of pocket. <laughs> I don't want to pay out of pocket. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, so what types of things, Alex, are they saying uh, that are going to uh, destroy or, or take health care away well, from Well, uh, to begin the with, they want to, you know, they, they, they have had this, the longest time they've had this, this notion that um, Medicaid, not Medicare, but Medicaid, uh, should be administered by the states yeah. and, and left up to the states. Well, you know, if you leave it up to the states, then, then this state, like New York, might have good Medicaid. But then right next door in New Jersey or someplace like that, it might suck. You know, and, and, and so there's no consistency of Medicare across the entire country or a set of rules that states have to... But what's what's, like what's that noise? Who's talking? Who's talking? Hear your wife in the background real loud. Oh, I guess. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> he's got a plug in. Oh, he's got, I unplugged it. Oh, oh, you unplugged it, and so you, we were hearing the rest of the room. I see. Okay. Anyway, yeah. uh, 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 you know, uh, it it is. Somebody said your wife saw the line. I mean, just something like that. Also, yes, the stopping uh, all fun, one. stopping all funding to Planned Parenthood, is terrible. It is just terrible, because what Planned Parenthood does, for the most part, its reason for existence isn't abortions. Its reason for existence is women's health, and women who could not afford a doctor to go to a gynecologist to go to a doctor. To prescribe stuff for uh, for women's problems, were taken care of by Planned Parenthood. That was ninety six percent of all the stuff they did at Planned Parenthood. The abortion thing was like four percent. Yes, uh, Jason. There's the problem: is they do don't just service women; they also service men. And maybe they need to start putting that more out there because it seems a lot of times when you say, "Oh, well, it's women that they're servicing." You know, it's men who are making the laws. Hey, fuck that. I don't care. Yeah. You know, but when they start saying how they're helping men out, maybe that might make a difference. Would you say, though, that, that Planned Parenthood uh, uh, works basically has more women that they... Uh, it might be, but, the, you know, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. You just need to start putting out how they do help men. But, yeah. you know, only three years... I thought it was only 3% of what they did was abortions and not a single penny of taxpayer money goes ever, to pay for ever, a single... Ever, ever goes to that. Can I address the Medicaid issue first? Well, wait first? a minute. No, first let uh, Charlene talk because she put her hand up. All right. No. What? Like, anyway, Bill can do it. But, you know, you were talking about Planned Parenthood, and they've got everybody thinking that uh, they provide abortions like crazy, you know, Planned Parenthood. The but then, you know, you did mention, uh, Jason, you know, that it's only 4%. It's not like the major part. Right. Right. Uh, okay, what were, now, what were you going to say, Phil? Uh, well, Medicaid is a state, uh, a state. Would you issue. turn your microphone down just a little bit? Oh, sure. You're, you're uh, over. You're. It's not. That you're over modulating. You're just louder than everybody else. All right. Um, wait a minute. It, it's, a, it's, a, it's a it's a vo- it's a volume slider. You can just 
and slide it down. Yeah, how's that? A little more. Okay. Put it on mute. No, uh, go ahead. <laughs> uh, now, what they, uh, I thought what they wanted to do with this health care plan was allow cross-state uh, purchases of, uh, of medical insurance. And uh, Medicaid, uh, so the, the people that are on Medicaid usually end up at the state level anyway. Uh, and so, but what was happening was the funding was coming from the national level, uh, and the, but the people were on Medicaid at a state level, not on a national level. So uh, I don't, I don't see any change. I just see that the no, funding, the, the, the state, the states, gets, Medicare in the states were being supported by the government. That right. meant that an individual state got a certain amount of subsidies. Now they just want to give these states a lump sum of money and say, you take care of it all. But it's not enough money to take care of everybody. How much were they paying before? I have how no much idea. Are they I, to I have now? no idea what the, how they, do you know anything about this at all, Jeff? Because you know the medical business about Medicaid. Yeah, but I don't know about that end. Uh, I would assume that, that they're reducing the price the amount of you're breaking up on, on us a little bit there uh that's all I did. jeff you're, oh. you're breaking up a little bit yeah i don't know what, are you are you on wi-fi are you uh are you, what? let me see when he moves this mic it don't break up what run us run us the speed test Is yeah any better yeah yeah it's better yeah yeah go, go ahead anyway as you were saying, you you don't know that much about Medicaid, then. Not really. Yeah, uh, because uh, I mean, I I all I know is that Medicaid is not like Medicare. I mean, it takes care of kids. It takes care of uh, people who can't afford medicine, um, uh, and and it it literally administers to uh, a lot of people who are the poorest of us in our society, and it's just so fun. It just how. It's not hilarious, but I find it hilarious. The Republicans haven't got an ounce of human compassion in them. I mean, it seems to be if you're going to be a Republican, you have to believe in this, that and the other thing and also drain yourself of every single inch of human compassion. Your, your, your uh, argument is totally specious. And how is it not specious? Tell me something the Republicans emotional. tell me something the Republicans have done in the last five years that have benefited the working class that have benefited the working person. Come on. Tell me one. Yeah, they elected uh, they elected uh, Trump. No, 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 no. Don't joke about it. I want you to no, tell no, me. I'm, not. I, I think I'm, that's I'm saying to you that people. I find that the Republicans have become this group of people that in order to be a member of them, you have to, like, excise from yourself every bit of human compassion. Well, you see, that, that's an emotional argument, uh, you know, not based on fact. And uh, w what have the Republicans done that... Uh, no, has, no, 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 you're reversing. You're, I asked you the question. Well, hey! I mean, I can tell you what the Republicans have done for the average person and what they've done for the people who need help. And I'll say absolutely nothing. Okay, Jason? But then, Phil, you've even sent out these videos about how the difference between a Republican and a Democrat. Yes. Basically, a Democrat is about we and a Republican is about me. No. So how are you? It's exactly. It's when you're trying to change society and bring changes to put forth changes and everything. A Republican believes that it's an interior thing that you need to change yourself and everybody needs to change themselves individually. That's a me mentality. And Democrats are, we need to look beyond that and go for society, and that's a we mentality. The Democrats so if you want to take care of people and you have a me mentality, you just want to take care of yourself. Well, the Democrats want change through government. Uh, the uh, conservatives, not Republicans, but conservatives believe that you have to change uh, the individual. And that's and, a me mentality. Not necessarily. That's that's your assumption. Uh, I, no, it's not an it. assumption. I agree with him. Would you agree with that, uh, Rob? Of that it's a me agree. mentality. Uh, it's based on emotion. Jeff, that's me mentality. Huh? That's exactly what he said. Yeah. Look, uh, I. If you're going to do it yourself. No, if you're but not you, as you, capable as you are, how are you going to do it? Well, there are people out there that will help. 
uh, uh, you know, there, uh, even if you want to get your taxes done, didn't you say, uh, I, were you the one that used to go help people do their taxes, or is that somebody else that used to call in? That was not me. Oh, okay. Uh, you know, it's, it's up to the individual to help their fellow man. Well, yes, and it's up to a politician to make sure that they help their fellow man. And since they have the power in Washington to effect things that will help their fellow man, they should be doing it. And they don't do it because they are selfish fucks. I, I quote Einstein, uh, the definition of insanity is doing the same thing I over and over that and early. expecting I a different result. I said that at the big top of my that, show tonight. That's right. That's exactly and, and right. So, what? Yeah, and what? So, keep trying trickle-down economics. Yeah, it doesn't keep, work. Yeah, keep Let's trying the, is did, it, Obama's, did Obama's economic plan? Absolutely. Uh, yeah. <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> we went from uh, 11% unemployment down to 4 uh, but you're looking at a time when we no. went from a wait a minute, wait a minute, no, shut up a second, Phil. You, and you, how did you that always happen? try to justify these things by some the fakta, previous administration uh, caused fakta, it. Fakta, it uh, um, eight years of it. Yeah. You know, the fact well, is that the unemployment went down considerably under Obama, okay? And the stock yeah. market went up considerably under Obama. And uh, a lot uh, of... Uh, yeah, what? now you're going to say it's cyclical. Yeah, so when 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 it gets bad because yeah. Trump's in office, oh well, it's cyclical. Okay, it, it is. No, it, it always goes the up. Republicans get in; it's a cycle. No, <laughs> so it, the, no, and banks, fall, and banks fail every day cyclically. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, big well, huge banks just fail. And, and you Wake know, the funny the morning, thing is, during you know, all this, during all this. All the banks failing, no credit unions failed because the credit unions are regulated, were regulated still, and the banks right. were being deregulated. And the banks were going under and the credit unions were standing the strong. Congress, which uh, was not a Republican Congress, oh, don't. passed oh, uh, a number of laws that allowed these banks to uh, deregulate and uh, to. Is that, what um, you're, is, that what you're be, is that what you're being told by your masters? Yes, it's these stated loans where you got people that were driving a taxi and claiming they were making two, three hundred grand a year buying houses that were a million and a half dollars at one percent interest. And then when it came time for the loan to adjust, they walked away from them. Why not? Why? By the That's way, by the way, oh, I, I got news for you. If I remember correctly, all that relaxation of loans and things like that started under Reagan. Yep. Uh, I th well, I thought it uh, happened under Bush. Yeah. No, Clinton, well, then Clinton, the, the, uh, the, whatever it continued under Bush. What, what did you what, what did you say? Uh, uh, Clinton is responsible for some. Yes, I, I thought Clinton was responsible for taking away the redlining ghetto neighborhoods. Well, uh, that I, redlining is a bad thing uh, because what it did was it uh, it discriminated against people from uh, you know buying in their own neighborhoods and fixing them up. But uh, when they eliminated all of these uh, things and they started loaning money, they were, they, there was greedy loan brokers that were getting a commission. They didn't care who they made the loan to, as long as they got their commission. I wonder if they. I wonder if they were. I wonder if they were Republicans. It doesn't matter what they were. Oh, they were money hungry, I, grubbing people. That oh, then, the, 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 then by that definition, they, they were Republicans. Republicans. Uh, that's that's. <laughs> Bigoted, uh, but uh, the you uh, bet your life I'm a fucking bigot when it comes to this because I was, find I find the kind of things I'm hearing being spewed by this Republican Congress uh, to be just so immoral that I want to I just I want to choke I, I want to choke somebody. I, I voted for Trump because I wanted him to clean the swamp. I would be happy. What do you mean he brought the swamp indoors? Did you hear what he said? Did you hear what he said? He was at his rally yesterday, and he was talking. He was talking about uh, somebody said about all the wealthy people. He put. He goes, "I like all kinds of people. I like wealthy people. I like poor people. But just in these positions, I prefer to have a wealthy person." Yes. Yeah. Did you hear? He, and he didn't even say it that nice. He oh, said, by the way, I, I would rather have a, a. I would. I don't want a poor person. By the doing way, that. did you see? Did, economic, did you see yeah. the? Did you see? Yeah. The, did you see the video of him golfing? No. He broke really what is called the cardinal rule of golf. Would he kick the ball? Again? No. You don't drive your, uh, the, what is that, the, golf the, cart? the ca golf cart onto the green. Oh, no. And he, <laughs> not, only, he not only drove onto the green, 
But the Secret Service, who were also in golf carts, followed him onto the green. It, it, probably because it was his own fucking green. Right. This could be a new Caddyshack. <laughs> yeah, but but that yeah, is considered a golf. cardinal sin in golf. Yeah, that's that's as is. bad as walking on the line of a putt. Yeah, yeah. You know, walking Trump's right across the line of a putt. Yeah. <laughs> Well, nobody said he was uh, uh, t uh, Tiger Woods. You nobody know. said he was the smart, smartest knife in the drawer. <laughs> no, no, no. Uh, my daughter, my 12-year-old daughter calls him calls him the 12-year-old uh, daughter calls him the, uh, what is it she calls it? The cock-sucking motherfucker? Executive Cheeto in charge. <laughs> executive Cheeto in charge. Yeah. I mean. So you're, you're, she's making fun of him because of his skin color. Now, I, no. <laughs> well, let's it's let's be hand. let's be honest. His skin color is not found anywhere in nature except on an That's orangutan. Right on. <laughs> except well, on Cheetos. Comes in a can. <laughs> then maybe he could be a green screen. <laughs> maybe him and uh, B uh, Boner were going to the same tanning salon. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah you know, right. you think that he juices carrots a lot? Uh, no, I think he sat next to Boehner while Boehner was getting his uh, tan sprayed on and said, "I want it like that." You got the overspray. Listen, I, you know, in comparison to what we got now in Congress, Boehner was a really, was a wonderful human being. You hear that the uh, Democrats are trying to oust Pelosi because of the uh, recent losses. Yeah. Yep. And, yeah. 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 And it makes sense. Like, if you're in a sports team and your your team is losing, 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 it's time for a change of management. Yeah. yeah. It happens all the time. And, and she's, I, she's been there for quite a while. She's been there yeah. for quite a while. And uh, Time to go. Time yeah. to go. By time the way, we've been, joined by, we've been joined by Renee. So. Yeah, I don't have no problem with that one. Uh, um Hi there, so Renee. So something you said you wanted him to drain the swamp. Did you mean remove all the millionaires and put in more billionaires? Because that's exactly what he did with your swamp. Uh, what, I would like, swamp. what I would like to see happen, and I, you know, the results of what he's done so far uh, is up in the air. But what I'd like to see happen is all the Democrats and all the Republicans that are in the Congress and the Senate be washed away and replaced with new ones. And I don't really care if it's a Democratic-run uh, uh, Congress or a Republican-run Congress or a Congress made up of all individuals that have no party. I, which is what I would prefer, that, you know, one, one vote, one, one person. And uh, you go in, uh, you represent your constituency, and you have no party that you have an allegiance to. Uh, you have an allegiance to your constituents. That's what I'd like to see yeah, happen. Okay. Because once you do that, you leave all the lobbyists in charge. Exactly. <laughs> you, you, not, you, know, it, you haven't even talked about getting rid of the lobbyists. You haven't even talked about getting I rid of the lobbyists. But Trump United. did. Matter of fact, he said that if you work for his administration, you can't lobby for what is it? Five years after, uh, after it's you, who needs it's who needs a lobbyist when you got the CEOs in there? Who they would hire a lobbyist to go in there? But they're in a position to the, the CEOs are in a position to help us uh, navigate out of the situation that we're in. Why should it be good for business and individuals? Wait, 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 wait. You're, when you're, you're, you're assuming learn. that because a person is a CEO, he's a brain trust. And, and and maybe maybe he's just a good CEO because he's a conniving piece of shit. Well, look at the ones that went to that high tech conference the other day. Uh, yeah, the high, by the way, that high tech conference. I read some of the things that people had to say afterwards, and they weren't as laudatory as you were. In well, fact, uh, a the, lot of them a lot of them felt that they couldn't get around to the topics that they wanted to get to, such as the immigration problem, which affects their uh, their their workers. That's you know some of their workers may not be able to come back in the country if they leave. Wasn't the uh, reason for the meeting. You know, it, it doesn't matter. It wasn't the reason for the meeting. The reason a lot of them went is so they could bring up some of these things. Well, because they were told uh, it was going to be an open meeting. But it, it, he just he just wanted a few little how how can we make technology better for the government and he left and they felt that it it was a absolutely useless meeting. Well, it's the beginning. You know, no, the uh, beginning is a useless meeting. The beginning is a meeting where you go, well, we, we, we at least got the whole thing started. Well, they they did. They they met. And, uh, you know, uh, maybe they'll, they'll come back with a plan. 
uh, and uh, there was no, there was know, not, there, have a dialogue. There was nothing. Dialogue. There, there was it, it, there was nothing there. Let me put it that way. Uh, Tim so Tim was, Cook supposedly was disappointed by the meeting. Uh, most of the, the the major people who uh, who aren't his toadies didn't feel that the meeting amounted to much of anything. It was a waste of their time. Uh, the the live uh, well not live but the recorded uh, parts of that meeting that I heard sounded very positive, and it was people well, that are in a because, position. Of course, because that's what they're going to let you see. Uh, I was listening to I, I think. What was uh, it? What, did, no, did they run it from? Did, did they run it from beginning to end? No. Well, then yeah, you don't know what was actually going on in there. Right, but it was uh, it was uh, you know CBS News. Uh, on the radio that I heard it. Uh, the only thing I'm disappointed in is I'm disappointed somebody like Tim Cook showed up. I'm disappointed that uh, I think somebody from Microsoft showed up. But they said they all just wanted to see. see. But the, it, the, one of the reasons they showed up, and some of them even admitted it was, we do gov business with the government, and so we felt we had to be there to maintain our relationship, our business relationship with the government. You don't see the benefit in this, though? No. Uh, well, uh, you know, our government. If, if I, in fact, in fact, I'd be happy if they went back to all the various companies and then hacked the White House. You know. <laughs> well, that's uh, you know maybe that's what the Russians did, or some four hundred pound guy in New Jersey with a laptop. Mm -hmm. you know? Well, he's smarter than Trump. You know, uh, and you know the the thing that Putin said about the hacking because he's denying it. He he said, hey, what the what these hackers did, and you know, there's no proof or evidence, no evidence that the Russians did it or or anyone else. Mm -hmm. And and uh, you know, and he said that these uh, hackers only exposed legitimate, true information, and that the problem is that of the Democratic Party and not uh, the Russians or the hackers. No, uh, sorry, you broke into you specifically went through the systems of multiple states and found out by going county to county which ones had invalid firewalls. They got in through those fi those voided firewalls and then they went through the voter rolls yeah. of each county of the counties that they could get in through and that was at least I, I, 39 I, I, think, I, I, think, I, I think the point that I Phil is missing, the point that Phil is missing here is that it was just wrong to do, okay? Uh, I don't care if they, they, you some, hush, hold on a second, Phil. Let me let me say something on the show, okay? The, the fact of the matter is that just because you can hack somebody doesn't mean you go ahead and do it. You know, they did it because uh, it, not because the Democrats didn't have good enough firewalls or whatever. They did it because they number one, whoever did it wanted to see if they could do it. And, and secondly, you know, there, it, you could do everything you want to right now, Phil, at your place to try and prevent somebody from hacking into your system. And I'm telling you, if I got a good hacker right here, I could be in there in three seconds. Yeah. Uh, no, I, I understand that. I read something about uh, how you, uh, what the hack is to see someone's camera uh, on their thing. So it was published, I don't know, remember where, but uh, it was beyond my capability. Well, I don't turn but, mine off because I, if they want to see me jerking off to porn, more power yeah, to them. So be you it. Yeah. yeah, so be it. It's nice to have a voyeur once in a while. Uh, I, got, I have a story here I want to tell you about. Did anybody watch, is anybody here watch John Oliver? Oliver? Yeah. Yeah. Did you watch him last Sunday? He did a story. I watched it last night. He, he did, yeah, he did a story about a uh, coal baron by the name of Robert E. Murray, who is who looks the, like a mole. Yeah, who who is is in fact the um, uh, the the head of his own company. It's called like Murray something or another. Uh, yeah, I like my ass off listening to his and bullshit. and uh, what happened in the, in the show. Uh, 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 John Oliver said that we uh, we were where's that noise coming from? Is somebody touching their microphone or something? Hmm. It was coming. Uh, anyway, uh, uh, Murray Energy Corporation. It's called. It's owned by Murray himself, and they said we got a hold of Mr. Murray to be, or to his company to see if they wanted to comment on some of the things that we had found out about his company and so on. And they then sent us a cease and desist letter. 
And according to Oliver, he said, that's never happened to us before, where before we did something, we got a cease and desist letter. <laughs> you know, you don't send cease and desist letters out when somebody's just saying, hey, we're thinking about doing the story, whatever. You know, you might write a note saying, if you do, you know, you're opening yourself up to legal action. But no, they said cease and desist. That's proactive. So, so, so John Oliver basically just said, so uh, after careful consideration, I've decided to talk about him. Now, you know this has all gone through HBO's lawyers and been vetted through HBO's yeah. lawyers. And every word he read on that show was vetted by HBO lawyers. And they probably all gave him the go-ahead saying, if this guy wants to sue, let him. He hasn't got a case. Let him do it. And so th today or yesterday, uh, HBO uh, and John Oliver and his uh, production company um, got the papers. They're being sued by this big fat piece of shit, uh, Robert E. Murray. He looks uh, like a mole. And it says the suit filed June 21st in the circus co Circuit Court of Marshall County, West Virginia, holds that Oliver and his team executed a meticulously planned attempt to assassinate the character and reputation of Mr. Robert E. Murray and his companies by airing an episode that ripped into him. Uh, Murray runs the country's largest privately owned coal company. Uh, the story quotes a section of the complaint that says they did this to a man. Now, I love this as their, their excuse, okay? Uh, they did this. Uh, uh, they did this to a man who needs a lung transplant. A man. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Hold on a second. A man <laughs> yeah, who does not too. expect to live to see the end of this case. Now, it, all I could think of there were two things. He's got lung cancer. Good. He's been sending these people down into coal mines for years where they've been getting black lung disease and lung cancer and everything, and he's got it. I think this is oh, called I think, I think this is called karma, you know? Yeah. Excellent. But anyway, the, the lawsuit isn't a surprise to Oliver. In fact, uh, the British comic said on the episode of his show that aired June 18th that he expected it, noting that Murray has sued several other media outlets in the past, including in May, the New York Times. In the episode, Oliver criticized Murray's business practices, saying that he doesn't do enough to protect his miners' safety. Oliver also noted that his team contacted Murray's company before the episode aired and that the company sent a cease and desist letter the first time that's ever happened to his show. The report adds, at the heart of Murray's complaint is Oliver's discussion of the collapse of one of his mines in Utah, which killed nine people. Oliver said on the show, the government report concluded the collapse happened because of unauthorized mining practices. Yeah. And then notes that Murray holds that the collapse actually happened because of an earthquake. Yep. Uh, and, and so we, I, was, I, was, I was thinking to myself, ah, well, you know, Oliver isn't going to get sued because he's being so open about this and saying, well, fuck it. If you want to sue me, sue me. But... The guy decided to sue him today. So, you know, I mean, I'm sure HBO is not quite, uh, you know, uh, wavering in their in their feelings about it. And I'm sure they okayed the whole piece. I don't think Oliver said, I I'll just do this and let, let HBO sort it out. So this is, this is great publicity for John Oliver to tell you the goddamn truth. You know? Oh, yeah. And, and the guy, he you, you need to see, even if you don't see the piece, Google the guy. And, and take a look at what he looks like and, he, and that he represents these moles. What was funny about this that was the very end of it where he said, where the, so if you're gonna watch, spoiler, spoiler alert, when the big squirrel came out, yeah, and, and he presented them the check for $4.50 and it said, so two people who got raises uh, for a couple of Christmases ago, um, sent back the checks to him uncashed, and the two checks said something for one was for a dollar thirty six for their Christmas bonus, and the other one was like four dollars and thirty two cents. Yeah, and so the miner wouldn't cash it, but the miner wrote across the check, uh, "Fuck you" or something like that. No, he, 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 they put void on there. And then yep. they wrote, fuck you, Mr. Murray, or whatever, or blow it out your ass, Mr. Murray. And they actually had the checks. They were showing the checks that people sent back to him. That's awesome. 
Yeah. And and so the squirrel came out with a big, you know, one of the big you win checks. Yeah. You know, yeah. and it said just like it voided. Fuck you. <laughs> Well, it I, was funny. It was. It's worth watching. And I thought John Oliver did a really good job. This guy's a complete asshole. And I don't know why you guys are. It, it's really funny because I watched. Uh, who is the the reporter that got his arm whacked? Uh, had to have his arm removed. He's uh, now a science reporter. Uh, for, O'Brien yes. or uh, yeah, O'Brien, Miles O'Brien. Miles did O'Brien. This, yeah, did this entire thing about clean coal and all of the references to back up the definition of clean coal and the new processes that they think that they're going to be doing was backed up by the people at the University of Texas in Austin. So fuck you, Texas. We don't use you as good information in regards to the coal industry. You've always lied to us about it. You continue to lie to us about it. And let's talk about this because I've been trying to figure this out. Their whole thing when they're done with the CO2 is they're going to pump it back into, they're going to drill holes and pump the CO2 gases back into the, the earth crust. And CO2 is you know, stuff we don't want to breathe. So when a good earthquake comes, how, what's going to happen when those gases are released? We don't really care because it's not, you know, we might not be around. Mm. So this whole clean coal bullshit coming out of Texas, you, you guys have got to stop lying to people. I, the, I don't care. The University of Texas at Austin, mm. you know what? Mm. Pull your heads out of your clean coal asses right mm. now and stop lying to the American people. Yeah. We've been doing it with oil for but, a long by, by time. By the way, Charlene, oh, Charlene, are you awake? Oh, okay. I thought I heard you <laughs> snore. I heard, thought I heard somebody snoring. I, no, you, I was trying to make a fart noise when she was saying that they're going oh. to the CO2 back into the earth with yeah. so that earthquake. The earth will make a big fart. <laughs> the problem with CO2 getting, you know, that much CO2 coming back into our atmosphere is that it's a big deal. You know, here, it, here, a lot of it. Here, here is the, CO2 here is, is carbon dioxide. Yeah. 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 Well, yeah. carbon dioxide is what plants need uh, to generate oxygen. Yeah. yeah, but you know what? This is a, we're back to. We're talking about carbon monoxide, maybe? <laughs> And the no. balance happens no. to be you can't dump a whole bunch of this into our atmosphere at one time. And if you're going to put it in the ground and Mother Nature's going to do her thing, we're not going to be able to control the levels of the amount that's going to be released. And that in itself is going to be problematic for people. Well, it, 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 you know, we can argue science all night long, and of course, Phil will disagree with you. Uh, but. Uh, uh, you know, the only thing is, uh, Phil, and, and, and what I don't understand about your, your stance on some things is that, that there's a certain denial of the, oh, yeah. of, of, of the bad doings and the wrongdoings of these people. You know, that you, you're trying to justify bad behavior. Uh, no, you're trying to make it look like bad behavior. No. Uh-oh. Oh, See? There it is. That was it. Why doesn't Idiot. Renee talk to Republicans? Because you've lowered the bar to below the dirt, and I'm not going down there just so that we can have a conversation. You need to educate yourself and come up to our baseline of education before yeah, we have you, a conversation. You know, you know what I'm going to do, so, Phil? So, Phil, so, I'm, Phil, so, Phil, I'm going to come out to your place when I'm in California. I'm going to go to your house. I'm going to take a dump on your coffee table, and you just go, oh, well, you know, who defines that as bad behavior? Thank hey, you. You know, uh, it wouldn't be the first time. <laughs> we are not lowering our standards. We are not lowering our values. We are not lowering any of those if things you that we hold to values that were legitimate, I would understand you're not wanting to lower them. But Democrats right. can't lower them any further than they've been lowered. Seriously, because 24 million Americans are about to lose their health care, and we are the bad people? We, we are it? It's, it's us. These, these people will be covered by Medicaid. You, do you believe? No, no, they, oh, no, they won't. Phil, nope. hey, it, look, look at what control look that look is. they don't have any income and they can't afford then to they pay go to Medicaid, healthcare. but then the states are going to administer the Medicaid and some of them are just not going to be administering very much at all. 
Well, then you got to vote those guys out. And oh, then you, uh, but, but wait a minute. Maybe yeah. those people. Maybe those people. Maybe those people uh, aren't able to vote them out because maybe those people are holding on to what little job they have and can't get away on a Tuesday to vote. Or they're illegal aliens and they don't vote anyway. Oh, yeah. Or maybe they do. The 30, yeah. 30, was it, three million of them did. You, yeah. you know what? That that's the whole thing. You guys lied, cheat, and stole to win the election, and you have no problems with that. And we're sitting here scratching our heads, going, "Well, if we want to live or we want to win, we just need to lie, cheat, and steal, and we could win too." Well, you know, they uh, their message uh, hit a chord with uh, people in uh, that have been. Uh, you know, a position where uh, you know they they need a change because certainly they weren't they were looking out for their liberal limousine driving uh, West Coasters and East Coasters under the Obama administration. No, but they we weren't do anything for the guy in Pennsylvania who was out of a job or in yeah, Ohio. Yeah. <laughs> Hang on a second. This is what this is where we get the lecture that the poor working farm person wants to be there. So here's the lecture. You're standing up for the people that want that people that want to go back into the mines, get cancer or get lung cancer because you think that's how they want to work. If they didn't, they wouldn't go in. No, that's not true. Jason, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Hey, uh, Phil, did you hear recently there was a study done about people working around certain chemicals who are more apt to get prostate cancer? Do you know, <gasps> oh, has that been tied to the uh, glues in the carpet at all? Yeah, it's it's definitely tied to carpet. Uh, the, the loose uh, plastic. It, it carpet's plastic, uh, you know. And what isn't plastic is wool, and uh, that's you know natural. Uh, I don't. Carpet does not give people cancer. What gives people cancer is uh, uh, you know the prostate grows, uh, and you you have but some there's, cells. There's, that are, there are studies done that people who are working around certain chemicals had like. Almost, uh, I forget what the percentage was, a higher rate. I think uh, firefighters, too, had such a higher rate of yeah. developing prostate cancer. Well, you know, they, there's there's these things. They burn. They're toxic. They go into these environments, harsh environments. And, uh, with your but, laying carpet and the glue that they used to use that you said they only, you know, uh, they only outlawed because they are putting them in high-rise towers with no windows. Right. You know, maybe that was giving the people who... Uh, what is that noise? Uh, uh, Brian. Brian. I'm not, you know, and, and you can't think that somebody wants to go and go pick strawberries for eight hours in the hot sun without a break, thinking that that's what they want to do for their life. That's not true. These, These people... people Oh, are, go ahead, are, tell through, me. They're crawling through the desert, coming here illegally, so that they can so that they can earn some money and send it back to their families. And uh, they're here by choice. Sounds like good people to me. Yeah, I don't Sounds see like anything wrong with them. Me. I, you know, I, I, everybody wants to sit like there. Good. Everybody wants to sit there and say that these people should do it the way that my ancestors do it. They came over here illegally. Your ancestors, when they came over here, all they did do is sign their name on a piece of paper and. Welcome to America. Many well, of them had I, these. I, I, I totally Some support. Some of them had these. Wait a minute. Hold on a second. Brian. 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 Can you hear me, Brian? Brian. Can you hear me? Brian. Can you hear me? He can hear us, but we can hear him. Can you hear yeah. me, Brian? No, you can't hear me. He because it, uh, we can hear him oh, with all that noise. Listen. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Hold on a second. Brian, can you hear me? Brian, I guess headphones on. Brian, put your headphones on, Brian. Oh boy. Hang on. Hang on. Yeah, wh what? Nah, you know he'll, he'll figure it out in a second. No, yeah, well, yeah, one minute, but yeah. Well, that's what I was saying. I think that that's what that thing you should just. <laughs> anytime there's an issue like that, you should just hang up. Yeah, yeah. They'll, they'll get it. You call back in, especially a regular. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, where were we? Um, uh, <laughs> Where were that we? Phil thinks that everyone crawls across the desert oh. and they want to come pick strawberries and you know it's thank you Charlene I, I am for workers Charlene visas. Martinez go back to where you came from I, I am totally Some for people worker, can afford for work visas, visas and they uh, come you know, with visas that expire 
Right. I, you know, if they want to come here, they should have, uh, they should be allowed to just be uh, vetted, uh, given a worker visa. They pay taxes. They do whatever they're supposed to do. If they well, a lot of them do visa. that already. They get green cards, and that allows uh, them to work here. Well, no, I'm talking about the, you know, there's a lot of them that come here uh, without green cards, and and we need, we need their them. service. We need their we need their labor. Without them. They're supposed to get it when they get when they come here. The, the majority. Well, over the, the board. majority of illegals come here legally, and they just overstay their visa. Exactly. Yes. Uh, uh, and, uh, and let's talk about this for two seconds. Phil, if you're an illegal alien and a white guy hires you to do a job in the United States, that makes him a criminal, too. Because so they all the know next these time guys. you say that there's a Hispanic person picking stuff in the field that has come here illegally, he has broken the law. Yes, he has. I want you to say the same fucking guys, thing about the guy who hired him. But a I lot agree. of these white guys know they're illegal and they hire them. They know yep. they don't have the right. Well, they you know, the other thing the is, cards you, they have and Charlene. Like that. You can go down to an area of San Francisco called Market Street, and you can get an identification card for $10. You can get a driver's license. You can get a birth certificate. And if you're an employer, Phil, you should not want to just take something that looks illegal, and they know they're illegal. Well, they don't sometimes. look illegal. They, they look totally legal. Uh, they have Social Security numbers, and they, and they give this to you. But you and don't know. Taxes. And they pay taxes, but you don't know and that they're illegal until right. you Where first... Where do all those taxes you, they collect go? They don't get it back. Stuff. They can't file. Well, they can't, but they shouldn't have been here in the first place if they're stealing and someone's identity. The guy shouldn't have hired him. No, well, you know... Right. Hey, you all, know, all I can say, up. Phil, is He's these people these people that you are calling illegals, their ancestors came from this continent. It doesn't yeah. matter. And their ancestors like probably hard. migrated back and forth well, through the winter and summer. But well, then you got the same the same argument for the Israelis. But you, you know, you no, know, the Israelis didn't come from there. The Israelis came from Europe. But many yeah, did. Not, your, not Asia. Not the ones that not the Sephardic, not, not the, the Sephardics did, but not the Ashkenazis. But uh, it doesn't matter. As an employer, Renee, as an employer, I have to fill out something called an I nine form. An I nine form uh, has to, they have to have two forms of identification, mm -hmm. and uh, and you know it has to be legal identification. Now, once they fill those out, if they're not legal, and I've had this situation arise, uh, once I file my quarterly taxes, then I get a notice that you know says that the uh, something's uh, wrong with it. Right. Yeah, something's wrong with it. The social security number doesn't match the name, and uh, or you know, uh, some something to that effect. And, and at that uh, Jace, point, then uh, I have to Jace, fill out Jason more has people. his hand up. I, I was just saying the the bigger issue I think with all of this, and it was stop the illegal employment to go after the employer, and don't just yeah. go after them for hiring illegals. Go after them for hiring Americans and not paying taxes on them too. Because you know, when I was younger, I used to go to the bar. Every single barmaid that worked at the bar, every single waitress. They were all paid under the table. When I was a kid, my buddies, they all worked at pizzerias. They were all paid under the table. Why not start going after all these employers who are paying these people under the table? It's not just illegals. Yeah, what what is the illegal workforce in America that are Americans? You know, how oh, much money are right. they missing out I on? I agree with you 110%, Jason, because uh, I have to uh, work against uh, these people because they're bidding some of the same jobs that I am, but they're so not paying let's, workers. Let's, let's make the workers. argument about going after the employers who are employing these people. Uh, I think they should. As so soon as you do that, and then you get rid of illegals, 100 percent. Well, you know, the they they're turning a blind eye. Our government turns a blind eye to this underground economy, and uh, and you know, I agree so with you 100 percent. The illegal has a responsibility for being has to take responsibility for being here, but the employer has to have take the responsibility for hiring him. And I, those are both against the law, and they should both be put in jail. Well, remember this congressman that had the nannies or the whatever, you know, oh, yeah. Yeah. Like, uh, Mexican women that were watching the children and stuff. And, you know, they had a, it was really embarrassing for them because they didn't hire them. Right. Right. They were like yeah. uh, not hired correctly. Yeah. A lot of them uh, couldn't take positions in government. The, uh, you know, they were nominated or they uh, were running for an office and uh, they they had to stop running or step down. Uh, because of these nanny things. I think there was even somebody that was running for California governor Rose. Uh, that had the same thing. Who was it? Rose Bird. Oh, no, she 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 was uh, she was uh, 
a sec, um, she was a Supreme Court justice. Uh, California Supreme Court was appointed by Jerry Brown that uh, did something with the death penalty, and she was, I think, recalled. And they're talking about building a wall between Mexico and the U.S. They need to build one between Canada and the U.S. because a Canadian yeah. just came over here and stabbed uh, Colin. Flint, Flint, Michigan. Flint, Michigan. Okay, New let me, Michigan let me, Anderson. let me, uh, there, there, there are uh, several a people. A Canadian uh, came over here and stabbed uh, Colin. And right. what was okay, name? okay, okay, well, Phil, enough is enough. Canadians? Enough, enough, enough. Because there are some okay. people who Herb. here have not talked yet tonight, hardly. All right. All right. Like ahead. Jeff, yeah. for instance. Right. Jeff, any comments on what we're talking about? Not, not, not much. <laughs> I've, I've seemed to have heard this discussion once before. Yeah, I, in fact, uh, in our, our, our numbers before. of people listening have dropped considerably since we started this discussion because <laughs> we're back in, in familiar territory. Well, let's talk about NAS storage and uh, cigars. Yeah, okay. Yeah, oh, God, help me. Uh, let's not. Smoked any good cigars lately, Rob? I smoked a good one last night. Really? Yeah. I had Davidoff on the way home. Nah, Davidoff's too, too, too light. Yeah, no flavor. Yeah, are you, are you well, calling I, you calling pussy. Phil a cigar pussy? Yeah, I'm I'm a, I'm a cigar pussy. And, and it's not about that. It's about what flavor you like. Do you like something that is a little more flavorful? Or? It's a very mild cigar. Yeah. See, and that's me. I like a mild cigar too. You know, I like yeah. a light wrapper. You know, a nice mild. I don't want a headache from it. You know, uh, so well, that's uh, not my, that's not flavor. That's a headache is from the uh, strength. Strength yeah. and flavor are not the same. Thing. Now, aren't you well, worried about? Strong, I get a headache. Uh, aren't any right. of you worried? Uh, me too. Uh, aren't any of you worried about cancer? Nah. Mm. Because you, you, know, you do know Everything that everything causes cancer. Well, no. In in the case of uh, well, no, I disagree with you, Brian. Because in the ca in the case of cigars. Cigars do cause cancer. cancer. Mouth cancer. Yeah, Not yeah, mouth cancer. cancer. They can right. actually uh, hit all kinds of things because it goes in through your mucous membranes uh, and goes yeah. to your liver and places like that. So, so people think inhale. smoking cigars uh, keep them immune from, you know, the cancer is uh, ridiculous. No, I'm not that worried about it, though. It's not. I, I'm not a, I, I know I'm not going to get lung cancer from it because you don't inhale, but. Um, if we're going to talk cigars, can I talk about Chanel handbags? <laughs> yeah, sure. sure I want to Are the knockoffs better than the originals? No, the fact well, I, that it's I, been proven the Chanel handbags cause cancer. <laughs> well, cell phones do too. Everything you do pretty much will detrimentally affect you in one way, shape, or form or another. So, That's right. Pump gas. They, they put a notice, uh, Proposition 65 or something. You pump gas, it causes cancer. Uh, you know, by the way, everything uh, you do. By the way, um, uh, Rob, ever work at a radio station where the transmitter was where you broadcast from? Oh, yeah. Like uh, most everyone except the last few years working at FM stations where it was a studio to transmitter link. I had a. I worked at a ten thousand watt station where you had five towers in in the yard. You don't think we were getting any radiation from that? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. You know, I we mean, have lead walls, right? <laughs> I have been told by people who were near radio station people. transmitters, who had loose fillings in their mouth, and they could pick up the radio station on yep. their teeth. Yep. Yep. Yes. Yes. Um, what about power lines? Those big power lines that are above some people's houses? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, you know, uh, I I don't know a lot about it, but I know that uh, there there are uh, things that happen with electricity uh, that you know they create fields. EMF. Yeah, yeah, yeah. electric and, magnetic field. Right, and uh, you know those have to uh, affect the, uh, affect you too. Well, let me let me, I, let me ask Jeff something because you have a pacemaker, right? Yes, I do. Uh, do you have to keep away from certain areas where there might be a, a radio microwave. wave? Microwave ovens. Microwave. Right, right. Microwave. Yeah. Well, wait a minute. Let um, him answer the question. The, the answer is 10 years ago, I would agree with you 100%. Yeah. Uh, they, However, the latest versions, and I'm on like version 12 at this point. Yeah. Uh, where they were very sensitive or, or dangerous. And today they're not that important. Uh, like if you go to the airport, yeah, I used to walk around it. I, I would say, "Oh, I have a pacemaker," and they say, "Okay." 
you can you don't have to walk through and the bomb. But today you just walk through, you know. So do, do you ever get zapped by it? Because I have a friend who had a pacemaker, and every he when he had sex, it would happen. And in fact, not only did he get zapped when he was having sex, because he got zapped so good, and there's a lot of wet going on, his wife got zapped. <laughs> you know, sounds like fun. You know, something. <laughs> you know, this, this, this actually, this actually, this actually seems like a bonus. Actually, I was, I was tasering him because it wasn't sex; it was rape. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I mean, so you you don't get zapped when when uh, your pacemaker kicks in. Not now. The original ones, there was a little bit of what a that jerk in your sex life. Because he was uh, at his wedding, and this guy got, he got really bad heart condition when he was forty, turned forty, and he got mm -hmm. married right after, like just as he recuperated, and he had this pacemaker, and he was giving a toast at his wedding. He was talking on the wireless mic, and he got a jolt. Somebody, and, somebody, and he, somebody's somebody's playing with their mic, and I think it's Charlene. Stop it. Charlene, please. Okay. Yeah, Charlene. We're, we're having a lot yeah. of people making noise tonight. Yes, go keep going, Rob. Yes. So he he was holding the wireless microphone and at that moment, I guess his heart did whatever and he got a jolt and he got a little shock even from holding the mic that he it knocked him down. Yeah. Wow. Well, besides a pacemaker, a lot of people have a, a what do you call a the extra charger? That well, you know what his was? His was that his, yeah, his heart would start to to beat in reverse or something like that. And they had a like they would if that happened, it would give him a jolt yeah. and it would. Uh, yeah, that was a defibrillator. And they're they're very, uh, let's say, problematic. Uh, you get a big shock. And that's probably what he had. OK. So. OK. Most <laughs> what, what, what do you mean? His heart went a lot during sex. Don't. Most because his heart started beating that. faster, and the defibrillator yeah. was trying yeah. to correct it. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I don't think he got it fixed. If it was that much of a plus for him, is that correct? Well, he's well, he's I gone. imagine you know uh, no. Je Jeff is is not only did he create some of this technology, uh, he is also uh, it's kind of like the hair club for men. He's also a client. Uh, and, <laughs> Sunbeam and, razors. Yeah, and and you you've probably seen this whole area. It keep constantly improving. I mean, to oh, where absolutely. where you started off was almost the Stone Age. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean, the nice thing about it, like right now, uh, while I'm sitting here, uh, I have a little uh, connection, a monitor that goes over to uh, the hospital yeah. and gives some continuous input yeah. as to what I'm doing. And no, you, they and only you, check it like once they. And once you people are paranoid about people looking through your camera on your uh, computer. Uh, yeah, it's just, so. <laughs> so there are people at the hospital saying, "Oh, Jeff's getting the, get, getting sex now." You know, <laughs> That's right. everybody gathers around. Yeah. <laughs> watch, um, watch the, uh, the graph. By the way, I saw the Snowden. First off, I forgot. I wanted. I said that it was Mark Marin and not Mark Petta, and so I apologize. But I agree with him. I saw the Snowden movie, and I firmly believe that if they want to know shit about you, that they can log on to an Apple machine and see whatever. Well, you know, my, you know my you know my yes, uh, Rob. No, I, I'm just waving to whoever's watching. Uh, oh, I know. see. Okay. Well, no, <laughs> uh, 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 my feeling has always been that I don't give a shit. You know, I mean, uh, 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 well, what, 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 yeah, what, 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 what are they going to, they really want to be bored to tears watching my life? You I know, agree. That's what Nixon said. You know, if, well, and, and, and do they want to, do they want to engage <laughs> in, uh, in identity theft? Good. Then you can have no life. You know, I mean, you're welcome to my identity. I mean, I, I just think that if you go around your whole life worried about whatever you do, because you're afraid somebody will be looking in on you. It, it's almost egotistical to think that, you know. But it's also too late to think it's anything other than that. Uh, it's too I, much. It, it's no. really too, the the train has gone, and I, you know what? I haven't even no looked up. Yeah, no. Who is the girl reality winner? 
Winters. Re- reality no, winner. Win- reality winner. Winner. Reality winner. Reality winner. And I thought when I first heard that name that she was somebody who was giving away secrets who had been a reality show winner. Right. Yeah. <laughs> That was a code name or something. You know, she was cursed uh, from the day that she was given that name. Yeah. Yeah. But anyway, uh, you know, I mean, I just, okay, you know, we have all this technology. It has gotten away from us because I think in the beginning, if, if in the very beginning we said, hey, this stuff is going to compromise people, we have to put in safeguards all along the way, we would have done it. But they did. But Act no, but no, but because we didn't. Because we didn't, we have to do it all retroactively. So everybody is like doing a, you know, an Aztec two step, <laughs> trying to stop the technology from being compromised. Well, and a lot I, of it's laziness, you know. Uh, no, John not, McAfee no, I, I, and I, I, and uh, Norton I, and all of these uh, things. They uh, they knew early on that there was the need for these kinds of securities, uh, but you know we as uh, as PC and, and Mac users, I know I don't even I don't have any protection on my Mac. I, I was told I didn't need it. I don't have protection on my Mac. I don't have protection on my PC here. I mean, you know, uh, if, if some I just know that there are certain things. For instance, if I get them an email, I shouldn't open up because right. it's suspicious. Yes, Jason. Did you hear the latest news that uh, Google is going to buy Uber? Google's yeah. going to buy Uber? Yeah. They're going to change their name to Goober. I knew I knew uh, that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Listen, yes, my yeah. battery's getting low. If something happens, I just wanted to let you know. Oh, okay. Fine. Mm-hmm. Uh, and if, if Jeff's battery gets low, we know we, <laughs> I can we, give we you better, a plug. better call the doctor. Uh, <laughs> uh, 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 the... Um, yeah, I mean, um, uh, with that joke, uh, what was the one that I used to, uh, you can't really use it anymore because the companies aren't in business anymore, but they was, it was that uh, Netscape and Yahoo were going to combine, and uh, they were going to be known as Net and Yahoo. <laughs> <laughs> well, Yahoo's still around. Yeah. I don't know if you heard this one. I, I made up one. I thought I made it up. I don't know. Anyway, uh, Charms Company and the... Uh, and the KFC Corporation have decided to release a new flavor of lollipop, low pop. They're going to call it the cocksucker. <laughs> I, somehow, somehow, every punchline to every joke you have is cocksucker. I don't know what it is with you, Brian. <laughs> well, he's dependable. Uh, he has a list up on the wall. Yeah. Uh, who, yeah. Who's buying we'll Yahoo? Uh, somebody, somebody is Verizon. Buying. Oh, yeah, Verizon? Uh, yeah. Uh, okay. Well, it'll be the end of them, too. Yeah. Eh, it's not a bad move because AT and T. If you have uh, at dot net or you know uh, one of the older SBC Global dot com or dot net, that was all done by Yahoo. So it's yeah, but it's been, Yahoo got uh, um, got um, well, hacked uh, for um, millions of names and and, and accounts. Oh, yeah, uh, who hasn't? Uh, most who of the, most most of these companies have. Yeah. They've all been, yeah, and, was, and who knows who've been hacked? The death, we don't of, know. the death of Yahoo was that they didn't have any ideas. You know, I mean, uh, Google took something that was just simply a search engine and has turned it into everything. A monster. You know, into right. a monster. That might be good for you know for Yahoo to be owned by a company who is an internet provider and they want them for their email service and for advertising. By the way, a little piece of information I found out the other day: there are more people who subscribe to Netflix than subscribe to cable television. Is that wow. right? Yes. I'm not surprised. They just hit 100 million. Do they have any studies on the age demographic? Uh, I have no idea. I mean, it, when you get up to 100 million, I'd say it's everybody. You know, I was, I was reading something about Comcast and what they said that they, uh, oh, it was an interview of the Comcast CEO. And what he said was, that it, it it appears that you know they're going away from television and they're going to uh, you know uh, streaming and internet uh, prov- uh, providing services just like AT and T is and, and they're and they're getting away from uh, you know the, the normal uh, community TV, which is they're what they already to too late. With. They're already too late. And they're they're so far behind on different technologies that you know as far as providing television <laughs> service to the customers. 
There, Why? Well, because it's copper or... Uh, no, it this isn't a question not of even, copper not, or anything not even going else. going to wireless boxes and just different stuff that they're not doing that, you know, they're behind. Mm. But, I mean... They're, they're I, not putting up the fiber like other companies are. I, like I, I, I thought about it and I, and I suddenly said 100 million subscribers at $10 a month average... That's a billion dollars a month this company is making. No wonder they're putting out so many crappy movies now. You know, but no wonder everything is a, a Netflix. Is nothing compared to what uh, Apple does. It, are you kidding me? I well, think, think Netflix at this point is almost worth more than Apple. Um, what was that movie they just did? Uh, war, something of war that Netflix just did. Yeah, the thing with Brad Pitt. Yeah, Brad it was Pitt. horrible. It was terrible. Yeah. By the way, by the way, I finished uh, I finished American Gods. Uh, if you haven't seen this thing on Stars, man, I this was wonderful. I looked at pictures of it on uh, Internet Movie Database, right up my dark little alley. I can't wait to look. It, get it, into it. It, it's really good. It's really, <laughs> really, really good. And and uh, who was it? Who was it that saw it? Neil the, Gaiman. Who who was it that saw it? The other uh, maybe. Uh, was watching it. Maybe it's not one of you guys, but the other night and said, "Well, you wait till the last episode and you'll find out who Mister Wednesday really is." But it's really it's all about it's all about gods, and the fact that they feel they've been marginalized. They because made a show of, about me. Yeah. Yeah, narcissistic motherfucker, aren't you? Gods. Oh, one well, of the best lines in the whole thing is, "Well, Jesus Christ. Well, he was just a son of a god." <laughs> you know, I mean. But it, it's it's about the gods and and this one god who is trying to get all the other gods together to kind of start something so that they can people can start praying to them again. It's 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 really an amazing. He's trying to unionize them. He's trying to unionize them. Yeah. Yeah, I got your prayer right here. Alex, I saw it was on Stars. Where are you watching it? Stars. Oh. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That's, it's, that's the only place. It, well, unless you know how to go online and get these things without having to pay for them <laughs> oh. uh, but, you know yeah well, that's my dirty little secret you know yeah, but, I, but I that isn't where I got I actually have stars and and I didn't watch it originally because girlfriend started watching it and I went eh. and then she stopped watching it and I started watching it and I finished the whole thing and said you got to see this thing all the way through it's just it's just terrific so Apple's I'm, revenue was 215.6 billion yeah. dollars uh, their worth is three quarters of a trillion dollars. Yeah, yeah. The seven hundred and fifty, and and Google is at five ninety. Uh, that, that's amazing. Yeah, that that's. So, so what were the numbers that you had for Netflix? Well, uh, uh, we're, we're ta you're, you're talking about stock price. I'm just saying that. Uh, the, the 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 first thing I said uh, the uh, the uh, revenue two hundred fifteen billion was their revenue. Okay, well, the, the revenue, of, I'm sure the revenue of Netflix is no, nowhere near that. Yeah. Yeah. But I'll bet their profit margin is higher. Probably. <laughs> you know, because, well, I mean, what are they paying for? They're paying for bandwidth. That's basically what now they're they paying for. Now they pay for movie rights. They pay for yeah. movie rights, but now they're making their own movies, so they're actually owning the very product that they're showing, you know? And, well, but, yeah, they, they don't have a lot of Hollywood movies, but they, they're paying for the ones they do have. Uh, and they're oh. paying HBO to run all those HBO shows. Yeah, but HBO is feeling the heat, really feeling the heat from Netflix because they're working on an old model. Netflix is working on a new model. I mean, if you watch HBO, you've got to, if you've got a TV set and you're watching HBO, you kind of have to watch these shows one right after the other. Or you uh, can go on and watch them on demand, but with Net with Netflix, you've got just basically an on-demand thing all the way through the uh, through the platform. Netflix's uh, 2016 revenue was 8.83 billion. Yeah, well, so they, but they, it's, it's higher this year. Billion, huh? And Apple was 215 billion. Yeah. Netflix so, so what, what's the point you're trying to make here? Well, I'm trying to. You didn't. What did you say that? Uh, that uh, Netflix is uh, uh, is the most profitable company. I said profitable. Yeah. Well, you're, and, and you're not talking about profitability when you're giving revenue. me when you're giving me those numbers. You're not giving me profitability. You're putting words no, in Alex's mouth, though. You were talking about the revenue uh, that they were generating, 
Uh, you said mm, you said a hundred million. No, I think uh, we, you you said they were more profitable, and no, I said no. I think it, maybe Netflix would be. I I take it back. I was wrong. Okay, Phil. Uh, maybe uh, okay. I, I gotta rub it in a little bit more. No, no, according, no. Rub it in. I'll hang up on you. <laughs> according to Can't CNN, uh, what? What? No. what uh, Rob? According to CNN Money, in an article that was written, or it's it's uh, dated May May thirtieth of twenty seventeen, uh, Netflix is worth seventy bill is now worth seventy billion dollars. Yeah. Oh. Don't Sounds you wish you had invested in that a couple of years ago? Is it? I heard. <laughs> There's a lot of uh, uh, if you Google Netflix, you see a lot of uh, a lot of articles saying uh, why people might be interested or not interested. Wow! 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 Anyway, like what, that, uh, what were you going to say, Brian? Be able to buy. Wow! Brian, I was going to uh, say that uh, I thought I heard some. I thought I heard somewhere that uh, Netflix. Is their own entity. They're not owned by Paramount. They're not owned by Disney. They're not owned by no. They're you know, they're, they're five, they, six, they are their own right? entity. Yeah. Yeah. Am I right? Yeah. 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 Well, good for them. Yeah. They all, were almost bought out by Blockbuster. I read. I heard on uh, YouTube. The Blockbuster. <laughs> yeah, Blockbusters. I, I'm investing in Blockbuster. It looks like they're going to do pretty well. Yeah. Hello, Jack Bishop. How are you're you this evening? You're still big in Alaska. You're, you've now made it a full house here. Good to be full. Hey, I heard you talking about American gods. Yeah. Didn't I tell you? Yeah, you you were the one. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. I finally Give found out who me. Mr. Wednesday is. And, he, and, he, and boy, did that shock the hell out of me. It didn't hey, shock no the hell out of me. I just wanted to know which fucking god he was because you suddenly realize in watching this thing that when we talk about god, there are so many gods out there. I mean... You know. 2,700, from what I understand, worldwide. 2,700 gods? I heard on a uh, YouTube uh, clip of atheists going, quote-unquote, beast mode, of which Ricky Gervais made that uh, comment that they're 27. Because, because on, on this show, that, uh, they, they come up with some people that, that you never even thought of. I mean, the guy who, uh, like, you know, kills uh, 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 cattle, you know, with, uh, with, with by, by with hitting him with a well, he said the old way was doing it with a sledgehammer, and that yeah. was honorable, right? But uh, he, he, he's a guy that he was a god, and it was a god I never heard of in my life. But uh, he apparently does exist in, in some Nordic countries or something. But he said he doesn't believe in any any of the twenty seven hundred Christians don't believe in two thousand six hundred and ninety nine of them. Yeah, as goes for Jews and Muslims, they. They only believe in that one. Well, as I say, the one line I liked in this series was, uh, well, Christ, yeah, but he, 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 he wasn't a god. He's a son of God. And I love that line when they said uh, something to the effect, uh, these Jesuses and these other Jesuses that you don't see. Remember that line? Yeah, yeah. Well, there are, there is a, there, there are, Pete, there are, there is a figure in uh, uh, Egyptian uh, mythology that, Share as many of the same uh, background. Well, they, they said info for, as they, they said Christ. for that one scene they have like this uh, this thing you know uh, 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 the producers telling you about the episode and they on that last episode they said how many one said to the other how many how many Jesuses did we have there in the, in the scene and he said oh we had seventeen versions of Jesus because there are like. You know, there isn't just one version of Jesus out there. If you look at all the uh, all the various uh, texts and things like that that people write, some have halos, some don't. Some are like this, you know. So and now right, they're right. saying there are other versions Black of Jesus. Santa Claus. There are, other, know, uh, there are a lot of versions. Just, of, yeah. 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 Well, the Romans were so upset about. Uh, well, I mean, Kevin. The, Kevin is in fact Santa Claus. We yeah, know that, so, don't we? Probably so. Yeah. But the, the Romans were so upset about all of these uh, Jesuses that uh, were r running around uh, uh, Judea at the time that they outlawed virgin births. They did. I'm serious. They outlawed virgin births? The Romans outlawed virgin births because there were so many guys running around saying, I'm the son of God. Oh, well, well, back, well, back before Christ, if in fact there was a time before Christ, uh, 
that we're assuming there was a Christ as we envision him to exist, there was a Messiah of the week. You know, they, they were <laughs> coming along all the time. I mean, Paul was a Messiah at one point, and then Christ well, came Messiah along. Messiah means his teacher. Well, well I no, guess but there's always been snake oil. Sales, no, no, but he had a better, you know, Christ had a, in a White House now. Christ had a better scam going than the uh, other guys uh, had going. So. Well, well, you know, and of course there was Zoroaster, who predates Christ. Yeah. By 500 years, but the same storyline. Yeah. Yeah. Zoroaster, did you say? Zoroaster. Uh, Zoroaster. And Jack knows more about it than I do, but uh, yeah, like I was saying, there's a your uh, Egyptian. Uh, Mythology. There's a well. That's a that was like actually a good movie. I know Bill Maher's kind of an asshole, but he has his, yeah. his uh, religious. Yeah, you know, uh, that's you know, good. very that's educational. Good. But uh, you know, you just if you're gonna just sometime, and I've I've heard you do this in the past, Alex. Discount somebody entirely based on the fact that you thought they personally were an asshole. But uh, you know, you need to answer that. throwing the baby out with the bathwater isn't. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Is, that, that, is that Kevin's phone? If so, get a beer for me. Nobody's home. Get a beer for you. <laughs> uh, Jason already did. Hey, Jason, nice job on the deck and the fire pit. Oh, uh, the fire pit's old. Oh, is it? Yeah. See, we huh? don't. You know what? When I'm living in California, you don't. No, no, no. Fire, no. Bad outside, don't. Uh, yeah, so fire. it's been a long time since I've seen a fire pit. <laughs> yeah. How come it was so far away from the dwelling? Uh, you know, I got, a, got a half acre, so I'm not gonna yeah. have it right against my house. We don't right. need fire here in Texas. We can just put anything we want to burn right on the side of the house, and it goes up right away. Uh, <laughs> it was 108 in Concord today. I, I had all the fire I wanted. Then you beat us. Hey, Renee, would you join us for the uh, intersection? Because you're going to get a Jack Bishop Award tonight. Oh, well, absolutely. I got, I, I'm a You mean you're having to game. give stuff away now to get people to call you? <laughs> hey, listen. More than GabNet bucks? We we gave away 100,000 GabNet bucks last night. Really? Yeah. We, yeah. we actually have 50,000. We have we got going on here. 150,000 GabNet bucks up for up for grabs. Yeah. See okay, so did we ever find out who voted uh, or who ruled uh, guilty, <laughs> non-guilty on the uh, Bill Cosby case? Uh, there, there, yeah, there was a major, uh, there were three there were three counts, and one of the counts uh, he would have been completely acquitted on, and that was the one about I think maybe that was the one about giving her drugs. Well, the question uh, the, was, would it be men or would it be women that would throw it into a hung jury? And we, we don't know whether there were more men or more women. Well, it was, it, it, the thing was is that there were, they were hung up on, on all three counts, but one of them they were close to agreeing, and I think that was on uh, aggressive, uh, sexual, unwanted, whatever. But well, the other the, two were, were not close. The big story on In whose the, favor? Well, the big story is that Cosby's going out on the road to give speeches on how not to get sexually uh, get into right. this kind of problem. Yeah, he's going to hold <laughs> town halls. Yeah, you're going to do. Yeah. yeah. When I saw that, I was sitting on the toilet and I fell off. <laughs> See you in a little bit. Okay, thank you, oh, gonna be, ladies and gentlemen. Jack Bishop is on right after us with the uh, with the uh, 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 intersection. Along with so Amy Renee, Manuel. Yeah. Renee was testing gravity today, and and as always, gravity kicks my ass. So Did you fall down? Off. <laughs> I'm a little black and blue in certain spots. <laughs> Did you fall down? The but steps? It's, it's nice to know that gravity works. And also, a uh, big shout out to my to my uh, Ron, this, yeah. my second ex-wife, uh, who is recovering now, and uh, the operation they think was successful. And uh, but she's going to be laid up for quite a while healing from this one because they cut her up like a carp, you know. Yeah. Uh, but hey, just a, a heads up one of my parents' friends, uh, he had prostate cancer. It was probably about six years ago that he was operated on. He's actually doing pretty good, or not? He had pancreatic cancer, pancreatic cancer. Yeah, I was gonna say, I don't think no, he, he had both, problem. he had both actually. Well, this and is what, still, the, and he probably had this Whipple method, you know. And uh, he's still kicking. What's the the unfortunate thing is, 
you know, at one point in time, his wife found out she had lung cancer. Six months later, she died. Wow. That's terrible. Oh, well. Them's, them's the breaks. That's life. Well, you're waving already. I didn't say wave yet. The I'm music fa- came on. Jason. I, Gr- it's... it's, it's uh, uh, what are Pavlovian uh, reaction. Great to hear from you, Jason. Get that wife to let you call more often. Kevin, thank you so much. Rob, thank you. Renee, Phil, Charlene, thank you. Jeff, and of course, the inimitable Brian, who <laughs> will say something dirty if I leave the mics on long enough. Uh, th- thank you so much. Wave goodbye, everybody, and say uh, say a uh, uh, big goodbye to everybody. Okay, thank you. See you. See you tomorrow, hopefully. Okay, and that's it. That's all she wrote for tonight, ladies and gentlemen. That is the uh, what? Oh, wait a minute. Uh, I, wait a minute. That's not what I want. Hold on a second. I'm, I played the wrong. I, you know what it was? I, I hit something here, and I started playing the uh, the ID, the imager. Anyway, hey, listen, I got to go. We'll be back again tomorrow night. Uh, the uh, the uh, intersection is next over most of the same station. In the meantime, in between times, if you see her, you know what to do. Tell her I love her. Okay? All right? Okay. Good night, everybody.